everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For Time of Legends Joan of Arc this week, we have a very important announcement to make. As you know, we've had some disagreements in recent months with Pascal Bernard, author of the game Time of Legends Joan of Arc. We're very pleased to announce that today we've reached an agreement to end all of these difficulties. Time of Legends Joan of Arc version 1.5 will therefore be able to be completed with complete peace of mind and delivered to you at the end of this year or at the beginning of next year. We thank you for your trust and support. Now, let us give you some more clarification, but please bear in mind that we can't go into much detail. The Joan of Arc version 1 scenarios have mostly been revised, with the core scenario book being the only one that has not yet been shared with you. The Teutonic Knights scenarios have been developed to their greatest extent, with only one not having been developed at all. This agreement has added an extra step to the file verification process, which includes the author of the game cross-checking the files and giving their approval before they go to the factory. This means that some delay that was not initially planned will be added to the delivery of the game. Both parties will work as fast as possible in order to have everything verified. Please also bear in mind that in China, the factories are still not operating at 100% capacity, and they still have social distancing regulations enforced, which means that they are working still slower than normal. We are going to go to print with Joan of Arc right after this wave of production of the rest of our games finishes. Super Fantasy Brawl, Solomon Cain, Enchanters, and then Joan of Arc 1.5. At this point, it's still uncertain how things will be by the time we send the files to the factory and start our printing process. But of course, we'll keep you posted in due time. Also, please note that we are taking the necessary steps for the restoration of the Kickstarter page, which will hopefully be done soon. We, of course, again, want to thank you for your trust and your support, and we hope that you are happy for this resolution, just like we are. Moving on to Solomon Kane, today we are here to share with you images from the production process. The production of the minis is moving on greatly. As you can see, several of them have already been produced. With regards to the digital proofs, we will most likely really receive them within the week. The factory sent us these pictures, so make sure to enjoy them. Moving on to Super Fantasy Brawl, the production of the carton pieces is moving along nicely, and today we're sharing with you some of the images of this process of the production. As you can see, we have cards printed out, as well as the box and the back of the board. These are some images from the printing process itself. The factory aims at sending us the first printed copy of the game this week, so you will probably have images of the final product in our next What's Up Wednesday. On to Enchanter's East Quest. We're very happy to announce that the first batch of files has been sent to the factory this week. The next batch of files will be sent by the end of next week, which means that the preparation process for production is officially starting. The factory will now enter a two to four week process that involves checking the files and making sure that they are all right for their production. After this process is completed, they will send us the digital proofs. We're very happy that the game is starting production so soon. This means that from our side, we are within the desired timeline for fulfillment. Of course, the factory is still not operating at 100% capacity due to COVID-19. And in our other productions, we have noticed that now more time is needed from the factory side to finalize production due to the added social distancing measures that they take and the fewer hours that they work. We will keep you posted about the timeline as soon as we have more information. Moving on to Steam Watchers, this week the team has tweaked all that there was to tweak on the main board and is now tackling, for a final time, the player boards. The game board was always a concern for us and we had to address it. We made a few adjustments on the havens and deployments, but Mark's design was solid from the start. 
The most significant change we've made was the addition of a 49th area, Nova Roma, to help the southern deployment by giving them some breathing room. And there's also something that you might not even notice, but we actually revamped the size of the areas. There was too much unused room on the board, and the areas could get crowded quite easily. So Severina and Louis-Marie tested the occupation size of every area with the biggest that they could fit. Two structures, three caravan cars, and two of the biggest elite units. We pushed a few borders around, scaled up the land mass, and we're now happy with the result. This means it's a bit less organic and harder to recognize Europe, but it plays far better in our opinion. <laughs> Can't wait for next week though. We've got some awesome things to share with you. And finally, to Hell the Last Saga. As you know, we've assembled our team of writers for Hell the Last Saga, our Fantastic Four. Under the direction and supervision of David Rokoto, the game's author, they will be responsible for writing the texts of the saga book, each of them taking care of one of the four parts of the story. Working at the same time and in parallel will allow us to write much faster the estimated 900 paragraphs, which is a different process from the working method we used for Solomon Cain, where all the authors worked together on each story, one after the other. But what we gain in speed and efficiency, we don't want to lose in consistency and uniformity in style. And this is where Anne Vettillard uh, will come in, our in-house writer, author, proofreader, and translator. Just as renowned as our four colleagues, Anne will be in charge of style consistency between the four authors. Now, after Matteo Gabaret's presentation last week, Let's move on this time to another sacred monster of the French role-playing scene, the very famous Tristan Lahome. For many of you, Tristan is first and foremost the journalist of Cassius Belly, a very famous French role-playing game magazine. Tristan was very active during one of the magazine's most iconic periods in the late 90s. He wrote the news, a lot of the reviews, but he also had several columns, and above all, he was the author of many role-playing scenarios that made history, especially those for Call of Cthulhu. Tristan is also the French translator of some of the greatest collectible card games and video games, such as Magic the Gathering, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo. He is also a writer, author of two novels, one called Operation Topia in 2002, and Rivar Rome in 2014. But Tristan is above all, for most French people, an RPG guru, where his contribution is immense. In addition to the countless scenarios published in role-playing game magazines, he has over 40 original publications, entire game ranges that he managed, like guilds, for example, significant contributions like Dark Earth and others, and of course, a multitude of French translations of American role-playing games like GURPS, Fading Suns, Over the Edge, Discworld, and Star Wars, just to name a few. With a game as narrative and immersive as Hell the Last Saga, Tristan's presence will ensure a tone, a style, and an efficiency beyond reproach. And then he'll be encouraged to put his own ideas at the service of the story, including those we didn't necessarily have already. We're more than delighted to have such a talent with us, even though his official appearance will be a bit later this summer. As a note to our English-speaking fans, the translation from French into English will be made by one English native writer that we'll introduce later on, which means that we'll have a coherent style throughout the saga book. Next week, we'll tell you more about melanin. Now make sure you note that September 4th, 2020 is the closing date of the Pledge Manager. Well, that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, and while you're at it, play some games. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.